Saint Francis of Assisi was born in 1181. His mother originally named him Giovanni after John the Baptist. His father, however, wanted a son that would be a man of business that loved France, so he named him Francesco. As a youth, Saint Francis enjoyed an easy life full of riches. He was popular and was the leader of a group of young people that spent their nights having wild parties. Despite his adventurous time with vice, he wanted something more out of life, not holiness, but glory. He pursued his desire of being a noble knight when Assisi declared war at a nearby town. When in battle, most of the troops he was with were killed. Since he was of a wealthy background, he was taken as a prisoner for ransom. He was chained in a dark dungeon for a year. Despite being a prisoner, he remained a cheerful man and was eventually freed. This experience didn't change his heart, however. He still continued to be a man of parties and a seeker of honor. When the Fourth Crusade was called, St. Francis was eager to claim the glory he so desperately sought. To his disappointment, however, he did not make it farther than one day's ride from Assisi. There he had a dream in which God told him that he was doing the wrong thing and told him to return home. His quest for honor was crushed. The village ridiculed him and called him a coward. His conversion took time. In his 25 years of life, St. Francis had lived for himself, but was now starting to experience a tug towards prayer. He experienced the grace to weep for his sins and was sometimes overfilled by the love of God. Evidence of this change of heart was shown when he encountered a leper during a ride in the countryside. He was appalled by the smell and appearance of the poor man, yet he felt called to get off his horse, approach the man, and kiss his hand. When his kiss of peace was returned, St. Francis experienced a tremendous joy. As he rode off, he looked back to wave goodbye, but the leper had disappeared. Another famous moment in the life of St. Francis was when he was praying in the ancient church of San Damiano. While in prayer, he heard a crucifix speak to him, Francis, repair my church, which is falling in ruins. He took this literally and soon began selling fabrics from his father's shop to get money to repair the church. Furious at the changes going in Francis, his father eventually placed him before the bishop in front of the whole town. He demanded that Francis return the money and renounce his rights as his heir. Francis returned the money and stripped off the clothes that his father had given him. In front of the crowd, St. Francis said, Pietro Bernardone is no longer my father. From now on, I can say with complete freedom, our Father who art in heaven. Wearing nothing but a cast of rags, he went off into the freezing woods, singing. Soon after, St. Francis continued his journey of trying to rebuild the church of San Damiano. Although St. Francis was never a priest, he preached to people about returning to God and staying faithful to the church. Once he had a group of brothers, he took an interest in the following things. The command to the rich young man to sell all his goods and give to the poor. The order to the apostles to take nothing on their journey. And the demand to take up your cross every day. His companions included men of different backgrounds. Those from noble families, common folks, students, the church, and those from the merchant class. St. Francis is often remembered as a saint who even the animals obeyed. Two famous accounts include the time when he preached to hundreds of birds who did not fly away until he commanded them to do so, and a time when he encountered a wolf that was killing villagers and turned it into a pet of the townspeople. St. Francis and his companions went out preaching two by two. At first they were not very popular with the townspeople, but soon they were welcomed with bells and smiles. Later on he went to Rome to see Pope Innocent III in order to get approval for his brotherhood. Pope Innocent rejected him, but later changed his mind when he had a dream of St. Francis holding up the Lateran Basilica. During the Fifth Crusade, 
Francis demonstrated his confidence in the Lord by attempting to convert the Sultan of Egypt. Although the Sultan refused due to political and personal reasons, the Sultan held great respect for St. Francis. Once St. Francis returned to Italy, his brotherhood had grown to 5,000 members in 10 years. Things were not perfect with the brotherhood, and they experienced pressure to make changes similar to those of other movements. Despite the pain and humiliation that St. Francis experienced in his last years of life, he very much hoped to share in the suffering of Christ. During a vision, he experienced the grace of receiving the stigmata. The life of a beggar took a toll on the health of St. Francis. He began to go blind and eventually died on October 4th, 1226 at the age of 45. It was during this time that he wrote his memorable Canticle of the Sun, praising God and all his creation. He is the patron saint of ecologists and merchants. St. Francis of Assisi, pray for us. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button for more mini biographies. And check out this podcast for a deeper reflection.